Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Talk. I'm Brenda, and I'm here today to welcome you into our little roundtable. We have an amazing guest today that is joining us. And before I introduce her, I would like to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us. Those of you that are watching on the replay, we're so happy to have you here. Come and join us anytime that you can live. And we do have the first Tuesday of every month, we are going to be starting the, we, we just started the uh, Tuesday talk. The first Tuesday of every month will be in the evenings. So you'll have an opportunity to um, come and join us if you are, otherwise occupied in the mornings. Um, and also our this coming Thursday, which will be July 15th, I believe it is. Yes, July 15th, we'll be having our um, Friday portion on Thursday night instead so that our evening ladies can also join us live. So that'll be a blessing for you. Just keep an eye on your calendars. The links will be there and the times and everything will be up. So ladies, um, welcome today. Jane, would you say your last name for me, Jane? Because I wanna make sure I'm saying it correctly. It's Diffenderfer. Okay, Diffenderfer. This is Jane Diffenderfer, and I am so blessed and a little starstruck. I told her, I said, okay, sorry, sis, I'm a little starstruck. <laughs> and I told I'm, you we're all stars, and we're yes. also grains of sand on the sea. So <laughs> we should all be starstruck with each other. Yes, we should. You know what? I love that because that's absolutely the truth. We really should be starstruck with each other. Seeing the gifts in one another, it's just amazing when we when we look at people and look at how the Holy One uses them, what their what their gifts are, what their purpose is, and 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 watching them operate in that. It is is it amazing? Well, Jane, let me introduce you to the ladies a little bit and, and give them a little bit of your uh, background, if I may. Sure. Um, Jane, in 1983, as a young wife and a new mom, Jane Diffenderfer was radically born again into the kingdom of God by the preaching of a traveling evangelist, Lowell Ledstrom. She accepted an altar call invitation to ask uh, Jesus Christ into her heart as her Lord and Savior. And then in 1994, Jane became born again again <laughs> when the Lord revealed his name his Torah, and the Hebraic nature of the faith of Messiah Yeshua. The scales came off her eyes when she embraced the new covenant written on her heart, according to Jeremiah 31, 31 and Hebrews 8, 8. As a result of the new paradigm of joining in covenant with Israel, Messianic Home Magazine was created and published from 1994 to 2003. And with the purpose of that, building up biblical families. Oh, I just love that. In 2013, Messianic Home became a program on the Hebraic Roots Network, which was viewed in over 120 countries. From 1994 to 2004, the Diffender for Family met each Shabbat for home fellowships and in-gathering meetings. And in 2005, these home meetings, these gatherings grew into a full congregation, Lamb Fellowship, and it ministered to multitudes of people in Middle T Tennessee. Today, the Nashville branch, it's now called Mercy Collective, has grown into a vibrant gathering of like-minded saints, led by co-pastors John and Melissa Differenderfer. And John is your son, correct? Yes. Oh my gosh, isn't that amazing? And also uh, Nathan and Shannon Perkins. Yes. Oh, pastor. Uh, additional areas of ministry that Jane has helped. I mean, are you impressed already, ladies? Isn't this exciting? <laughs> we have so many questions already for you. Um, so additional areas of ministry that Jane helped create include Haya Praise Dance Ministry, established in 1999 as part of LAM, the Hebraic Roots Network, no small feat, uh, the Hebraic Roots Network, Taking Yeshua and Torah to the Nations in 2011, Women of Valor, established in 2012 to equip female image bearers. Jane is a retired 30-year veteran of home education. And sis, we have so many homeschooling moms here. Uh, I am just, I am delighted that you have all of this 30-year background because a, a lot of our women need women like you 
who have been there and done that and they can look and they can ask questions. It's, it's amazing. So thank you. Um, let's see. She's a mother of nine. Okay. Hats off. All of whom are now adults. She's a grandmother to 14 and counting. Tra um, tragically in 2015, Jaden's husband of 35 years suddenly abandoned his family, his marriage, joint ministries, the congregation and all faith-based businesses. To recover from the devastating losses, Jane clung to the Holy One and he has been faithful to provide. Amen. Recently, Jane graduated from Bethel University in Minnesota with a degree in organizational leadership with a concentration in Christian ministries. Um, I'm sorry, I got, I got distracted there. Okay. <laughs> um, with a concentration in Christian ministries, she is using all her years of ministry experience, education and life lessons learned to move forward with Adonai in the work of Women of Valor and as an author of Becky Books. The mission of Women of Valor, and this is the part where I already started crying, Jane, this morning. So <laughs> the mission of Women of Valor is to equip female image bearers as kingdom co-laborers in equal partnership and counterbalance with their brothers in Messiah. Jane's purpose is to minister reconciliation between the church and the synagogue, between the Jew and the non-Jew, to bring us closer to the unity of faith that Messiah Yeshua prayed for in the garden. Wow, Jane, whoo, that's a lot. I, um, I am, I'm so excited to talk to you about several things. And I think that the, the first thing, the first two things are the Becky books, because you're a Becky book author. Yes. The second thing is the women of valor, and I love how you are calling forth women as image bearers to co-labor, not to replace, not to be in charge of, not to take over for, but to co-labor with brothers and Messiah. I, I just absolutely love that. And the third thing is that you have a passion to call forth the young women of this next generation and the generation after that, the Gen X too, to call forth these women and to show them uh, to, how to walk in their purpose and to yes. truly overcome the situations of this world because we are all hit with situations in this world and none of us are exempt from the, from the way that the world uh, uh, throws things at us, right? Yes. Uh, and all of that, is in order to train and equip and to strengthen and to build us up in our purpose. And Jane, you, you are uh, such a bright example of a woman who overcomes. You are, you are calling forth these women, young women with or without spouses, if they have a husband or if they don't have a husband, if their husband's believing or their husband's a non-believer, if their husband is with them or if their husband has left them, you are calling forth these women saying, ladies, this is what you can do. And, uh, and I just love that because it's empowering women in a place where for so many years, women have been told that they have no value unless they're in a marriage. First of all, they have to be married or they don't have any value and their husband has to be the leader or they don't have any value. And you are blessing women with, with um, proving to them that, look, ladies, this is the reality of life. Sometimes things don't go the way that you planned. That's right. Sometimes things go completely haywire and you don't know they're going to happen and the world just blows up overnight. And what do you do? And right. that's what happened to me. You know, I just had my world just blew up in 2015, like overnight. I had no idea. And I had to start all over again in so many ways. Mm -hmm. So many layers of my life just blew up. And, and um, I just had to trust that God had a purpose in it. And back in that time, I said, Lord, why did you allow this to happen in my life? You know, because he did, <laughs> you know, it's not, you know, and, and he said, it's for the Rachamim, which is the Hebrew word for tender mercies. Oh. And he said, 
he said, will you partner in it with me? And I'm like, yes. I mean, I feel like we shook hands on it. Mm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like we just shook right hands. Yes. Okay. I'll partner with you in it. You know, and I, how that was going to come to fruition. I had such great hopes of restoration. I had great hopes of reconciliation. I had great hopes that God was going to revive, redeem, and save the marriage that I had and that he was going to, um, you know, I gave it every shot, every opportunity, every, everything you could possibly do to work towards saving a marriage. I did. But when, you know, the man has made a decision to move on with another woman, you can't stop him from going that way. And so I just had to, um, really call out to God and ask for him to just give me that right hand deliverance to lift me out of the pit. Cause boy, I, I mean, nothing like getting kicked into a pit, <laughs> like literally just, and, and I felt so smothered and covered and everything was so dirty and so dark for, for quite some time. I wondered if I'd ever see the light of day again in grief and sorrow and right. tragedy and loss and loss upon loss. So I had to really come to find out who I was again in Yeshua, who has Yeshua called just me to be not who had he called my, I call him the husband, the husband, the, <laughs> the husband, he was the husband. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but I had to come to a place where uh, who am I and what has God called me to do as a woman, just over the course of all the years of life and ministry and experience, I had to rethink what has God spoken just to me, mm -hmm. not what has he spoken to us or to our children or our family or our ministry partners, or what, what has he just spoken to me and find that rootedness like you you know you want to be rooted with your caveat you have to be rooted in Yeshua and what has Yeshua called you to and called you to be and called you to accomplish and get your identity in him in him alone I mean I had an identity as the Mrs. Diffenderfer <laughs> when you asked me what how to pronounce the name I'm like every time I tell people just call me Jane you know, Jane. Yeah. someday, good Lord willing, I will marry again. And you'll just know me as Jane. You won't know me as a last name. Right. And besides, it's really hard to pronounce. So I yeah. just say, you know, I'm Jane, you know, or if you want to go Jane D, you can do that. Jane D. <laughs> that's good. Me. Love it. So um, how did you, so first of all, let me just say that you have two amazing Becky books. Oh my gosh. Ladies, um, we will make sure um, Sydney's a genius. She's on here. Sydney, I know that you'll be able to do this. Uh, we'll make sure and link those in our in the cafe um, in in the store so that you can go on and, and get those books. But you have one. Um, the first one that I bought was the Sabbath, his day of delight. And I just love that book. Jane, you, you just, you just make it so simple. You make it so easy and doable. We have so many questions from ladies who are maybe new and coming into celebrating the, and honoring the Shabbat. And they're, they have ideas from all kinds of, you know, resources that tell them that things have to be this way and have to be that way. And you really just simplify it in that book and you really bring it down to what is, what does what does a holy one actually tell us that we need to be doing and then and then going from there the difference between tradition and um you know what's required in tradition and and the things that traditions can definitely encourage your experience and enlighten your experience and brighten you know your home uh, but what is god requiring of you to do and what can you do and I just, I thought that was a really great way of, um, of sharing in the book. So I think it's a, I think the Sabbath is something we're invited to join into okay. with the Lord. Mm. It's an, it's an invitation to spend some incredible quality time <sighs> in that. his presence. And it is like, I, I posted on Facebook this past weekend. Have you ever thought about, he prepares a table before me? in the presence of his enemies, he prepares mm -hmm. a table for me in the presence of, his, uh, of my enemies. You right. think about it from that point of view is every time you set your table, you're reminding the enemies of God 
and even those who oppose you, <laughs> whatever. Oh. In, there's a lot of people on the earth that are opposed to keeping Shabbat if you're not Jewish. Mm-hmm. I wasn't raised in a Jewish home. Um, but, you know, being belonging to Yeshua, who is my Jewish bridegroom, I spend time with him. And so setting that table and thinking of it as an act of a spiritual warfare, literally, you are preparing a, a table and you're saying, I am in covenant with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My bridegroom is Yeshua. And so I love to have people over, but sometimes I'm like, okay, Yeshua, it's just you and me tonight. you know. Yeah. And I literally think about him sitting at the table with me yeah. because it's just that simple. You make the most beautiful meal of the week. You want a special, you want it romantic. You want, you know, flowers or candles and beautiful dishes and the best food that you can come up with. I think of it as I'm sitting with royalty. I'm sitting with the king Mm. and I'm in his presence for Shabbat. And that kind of helps you just think of it rather than what's required or you're obligated or Mm -hmm. whatever. I I hate that word obligation. Like only the Jews are obligated to keep the Sabbath. I'm like, no, nobody's Uh, obligated. uh, We all get to. It's it's a great opportunity that God says, come on and spend time with me. Come away with me. Be my beloved. Be in my presence. Dwell with me. You know, bring people into the light of my kingdom. And, you know, that's where when you have people over for Shabbat dinner, and that's something I'm going to start doing. I just got relocated and moved back to Nashville, but I want to welcome people into the home, Mm -hmm. into um, table fellowship. It is like first century believers. They, they, they met daily, you know, you know, in the temple for prayer, but even when they weren't in the temple, they met in homes to fellowship, to eat together. And that's a very vital part of um, the gospel of the kingdom is, is dining and sharing scriptural truth with one another and praying for one another, encouraging one another. So that's why we do a, um, a Rev Shabbat dinner at Women of Valor conferences. It's part of that table fellowship and that communion around the table. We're breaking bread and drinking wine and remembering, you know, who came forth from the grave, you know, who came forth, the bread of life that came forth from the earth. I mean, you just think about that every Friday night when the you know, the Jewish blessing over the bread or the meal is, you know, blessed are you, Lord God, who brings forth bread. You know, blessed are you, Lord God, the king of the universe. We always have to remember yes. he's the king who yes. brings forth the bread, which is Yeshua from the earth. You know, every Friday night, it's like communion in the church. You know, yeah. you have bread and wine and you remember what Yeshua has done for you. And so I think it's a great opportunity to do it you know, in your home, just one-on-one with somebody, you know, or with your community of faith, maybe get a a Rev Shabbat banquet going every once in a while. So people can all, uh, (laughs) I see a new face. It's just fun to see the faces when they come on and say hi. So hello. (laughs) But anyway, go ahead. Do you have any more questions about that book? Oh, I just, I just, I loved that book. I, um, I reread it last night real quick. I would really encourage you ladies to, to grab that book. Um, and because it's a Becky book, it's so inexpensive, the Sabbath, his day of delight. Um, and like I said, we'll have that in there. And then you have another book that you, that you wrote three days and three nights of Messiah, the sign of Jonah. Yes. I love that. I have not had a chance to read that yet. Yes, this one is um, about the three days and three nights, you know, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah in the week of Passover, and also the um, exact same three days and three nights on the Hebrew calendar of Moses's deliverance and Esther's deliverance. Um, Purim, the holiday that we celebrate, you know, Esther. And what happened with the deliverance of the Jewish people from Haman Boo, (laughs) you know, that all happened on the biblical calendar on the same three days and three nights. She went into fasting and prayer. I mean, the announcement in the decree to kill all the Jews went forth on, they received it on Passover. So when she's saying we're going to fast for three days and three nights, we're going from the 14th to the 17th, you know, when the deliverance happened, when uh, the Jew was exalted, Mordecai was lifted up, Mordecai, the Jew is exalted, lifted up. It's so many parallels to Yeshua being raised from the dead. 
as wow. it, and it, there's just Jewish teaching on, um, Psalm 22 in connection with David and Esther is also in connection with Yeshua. It's also in connection with the deliverance from captivity from Egypt. There's just parallel upon parallel that I am so excited. I'm, I'm praying good Lord will provide an opportunity to do another Women of Valor conference for a DAR coming up, maybe a Western conference uh, to concentrate on that book. Um, we like to gather for the new moons for women of valor. And so this one we have coming up is already sold out for a lul, but it's always like preparing the bride for what's about to come, you know, with the feasts, uh, a lul is all about preparation. And so we, we gather every year for a lul new moon. And we've done it in the past for Kislev because I like people to understand why is Hanukkah important. A lot of people come into the understanding of the biblical festivals and they think, well, Hanukkah is not one of the, you know, Torah festivals or Purim isn't one of those, but they're actually anchored in the feast. They're rooted, you know, Hanukkah is rooted in Sukkot and Purim is rooted in Passover. And that is how I explain it in the books, in that book. And, you know, the Becky books, I should say the Becky books, we started writing them. Um, they're called Becky. It's an acronym books, encouraging the kingdom of Yeshua. And so they're um, written all by women, um, Dr. Halisa Aylwine and I, and Robin Gould, Dr. Robin Gould and Keisha Gallagher. And then there's also Sariella Krieger. She doesn't live within the continental United States right now. So she doesn't get to attend our events. Um, well, she does. I think she's moved back temporarily. She's caring for her husband. But so we, um, we get together with Women of Valor and include the Becky book authors because our missions are so much the same. And um, so we, we do that to encourage the kingdom. You know, I had a friend recently talking to me about what are we rooted in? Mm. You know, mm. like some people think, oh, you non-Jews, you're not joined the Jewish people. And now you're rooted in the, Jew in the Jewish people. Or, or some people think, oh, you non-Jews, now you're rooted into Israel, the Commonwealth of Israel or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's all true. But the reality is our real root is Yeshua. He is the root of our faith and we are rooted in him and it's his kingdom. So we're rooted in the kingdom of Yeshua. And I think that's a little more central than the yeah. others because they can right. take off in different ways if we're not careful. Very so, true. Um, you know, just the kingdom of Yeshua is what we're talking about what we teach yeah. about what we preach about we believe women are called to be evangelists the first evangelists were the women at the tomb <laughs> and they were given an apostle they were given an assignment they were sent like apostles right. to go to the 12 <laughs> you know right. the men and share right. the good news i mean that's just not an accident that god no. decided to reorder the way the world was by re revealing truth to female image bearers and uh, halisa elwine she'll call them female like the male is spelled m-a-i-l like you are delivering <laughs> some kind of mail <laughs> a message that. you know and so um that is sometimes i will word it you know we're female mailing the information to you sending off the kingdom announcements and proclamations and so i, I like to think of it that way Oh, I love that. Yeah, this is um, uh, one of my, it's funny because I was, I was reading this and it just made me cry this morning because what's, what has, what is so stirred and, and all of you who, who know me and been, you know, been around me for a while, you know that I'm always saying that image bearers, we truly are image bearers. And and the light of Messiah is within us. Yes. Not it's within it's it's within every human. Every everyone who's breathing has that spark of divinity. And God is calling each and every one of all living human beings to be part of his kingdom and to be his image bearer. But what I'm saying is is each and every one of us, we are image bearers of him. It doesn't mean that we're um, doing away with anyone else. We're not over, we're not, um, oh, you know, being over, we got a hot mic out there, someone. 
we're not we're not being yeah. supremacist you no. know there, there's it's like there's no supremacy no. Of, of lording over um in the kingdom there's supposed to be mutual submission to one another and i like the idea of the cherubim on the ark it's kind of like a picture for me they are mutually submitted and bowed down to one another they are not one's Ooh. not higher than the other <laughs> one's not wow. you know it, it, and that's what female image bearers do we should be right. bowing with our male brothers exactly. in mutual submission right. to the kingdom and god's calling and his um divine instructions for our lives we are not to be uh, subservient to one another in a way that you feel I used to I used to I mean back in the day um, when I started homeschooling and the whole movement was a lot connected with Bill Gothard's umbrellas you know um, I don't know if you've seen that but it's like yeah. there's God yeah. and then your church and then the umbrella of your husband and then the wife and children there's like all these umbrellas stacked on top of each other and I used to think that was how I operated on the earth that I was under my um my congregation and you know i do believe there's a, a, a good order to some kind of spiritual authority to be accountable Absolutely. but when my world just all of a sudden blew up i mean the umbrellas of my church <laughs> literally right. our fellowship our congregation that we'd started lamb fellowship just exploded because mm -hmm. of the devastation that happened and my former mm -hmm. husband's umbrella blew away so i have no father figure mm -hmm. i have no husband i have no covering mm -hmm. you know in the uh, covering doctrine teachings right. and so i'm like oh what am i now where am i and yeah. yeshua had to show me that i am under him mm. there is no mediator between mm -hmm. him and me there is mm -hmm. no husband there is no congregation that doesn't mean i don't submit to my local congregation i submit right. we submit to one another right but really the a more beautiful picture is the talit of Yeshua rather than umbrellas. They're not very Hebraic anyway, Yeah, <laughs> but a canopy, yeah. a wedding canopy, yeah. a hoopa, a hoopa. <laughs> uh, or a talit or a talit yes. in a hoopa. Yes. Those are better coverings yeah. images for us to be thinking right. about because um, they are, you know, Yeshua's covering is with us. I had an yeah. experience um, I'll share with you. Um, my world blew up in the fall of 2015, 2016 HRN revive was happening. Fourth of July weekend. Uh, I wasn't there. It was the first time I wasn't there. It, it started HRN literally started as an answer to prayer in my garden, in my backyard. And here I am all of a sudden not participating. I'm no longer involved. Um, mm. And that's a whole story into itself. Talk about loss of identity. Yeah. I mean, really? But, yeah. You lose mm -hmm. your, I lost my, yeah. I lost so many things simultaneously. It was unbelievable nightmare. Mm, and I think some people are afraid of me because they're like, oh my gosh, I hope nothing like that ever happens to me. Oh. And I hope nothing like that ever happens <laughs> to you too. Yeah. But um, in the midst of that, I, I, I um, was praying and I go, Lord, you, you spoke a vision to me earlier this year, but nothing seems to have come to pass. I mean, it was a beautiful vision. And, and I said, so, you know, what are you doing? Here we are six months later and it's it doesn't look like i thought it was going to and i'm alone mm -hmm. and i'm going to be alone and i'm i'm not used to being alone i'm used to being married <laughs> i've never lived alone in my life <laughs> i just found out that, that i can do that too but um he asked me to come stand on this rock i was outside my apartment complex it's on like, like a like a, a rock wall that builds up to a drainage area with muddy mucky stuff down below and um he goes come over here and stand on this rock he, he actually asked me do you want to see the vision in a different perspective because when i first saw it it was like watching a movie i saw this vision happening mm -hmm. and i was in it and he showed me what happened in it with me but now this time he goes you want to see it again in a different perspective and i'm like okay so he goes go over stand on this rock and i'm like now i'm in the vision i'm not oh. watching it it is 3d all around me and i'm standing on the rock and the lord said to me he said so where is your husband and i pointed down to the muck and the mire down below he's down there you know because this was the vision and he goes and where are you and i go well, i'm on the rock and I'm standing at your right hand. 
And I did not catch that the, when I which, watched the vision before. In the vision before, he pulled me up with his right hand out of the pit. But now I'm standing on top of this rock pit, quarry, you know, drainage, smuck and mire. I'm standing on top of it on the rock. And I go, I'm at your right hand. And I literally went like this. And I saw Yeshua right here, face to face, looking at me. Wow. And I went, it was, it was the most beautiful ever. I mean, this will love, this will make me last the rest of my days on this earth, this vision of Yeshua's face. But in the vision, he then puts his talit over my shoulders. So I'm under his right arm wing, literally. Mm. And mm. in the vision, he turns me 180 away from the disaster that's below us. And it's taking me to a new place. And that's when I really got a grasp of I am dwelling and abiding in the secret place under the shelter, the tabernacle of his right hand protection, that he is my covering. Mm -hmm. He's always been my only covering. You know, um, he, he really wanted the, the husband to come under the wing as well, but the husband didn't choose that. Mm -hmm. He chose a different way to go. And so Yeshua is just going, okay, you can't, you don't, you don't have a place in being able to make any influence to change this anymore, which is terrible when you've been a wife and you've had all this influence, you suddenly realize you have none <laughs> and you cannot right. change what's happening. You just have to learn to accept and move on and go where God's called you to. And so that is why um, with women of valor, you know, with the Lul, it's, it's big. It's about Psalm 27 about dwelling in the secret place and abiding under the tabernacle the covering the shelter the wing of yeshua and finding our identity as his bride an identity no man can take away from us our identity is rooted in yeshua in the kingdom and who we are in yeshua in the kingdom and that um you know that this is a vision that just continues to unfold in my life and but it it gave me the strength to keep moving on through a divorce I did not want. I did everything I could to not um, be divorced. But as a matter of fact, when it came down to, you know, the divorce, you know, they were like, okay, you have to pay your part and your attorney. And I said, uh-uh, I absolutely refuse. I said, I didn't want this. He wants it. He has to pay for it. I won't pay for it. <laughs> I absolutely refuse. And so, you know, I got a refund on my deposit to my attorney and I went to Israel for Sukkot. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to the king. I'm going to oh. Jerusalem. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so, that is so great. I, your identity is rooted in Yeshua and nothing, 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 nothing can remove your identity in when you are rooted in Yeshua. When we're rooted, Jane, this is what I'm getting from you. When we're rooted in any other thing, any other identity, that's when we get devastated. Right. You know, and it's not that we're not to be um, all in. We're always to be all in, in the covenants and the relationships that we're in. Always we're to be all in. However, we're never to be idolaters. And when we find our identity in something other than Yeshua, that's what happens. And then we are, uh, we are completely, completely devastated. Of course, Jane, how do we don't even know that that's what's happening until it's revealed to us, right? I mean, we really don't know that that's right. what we're doing um, until it's revealed to us. And that is the goodness and the grace and the kindness, the chesed of, of the Holy One. He, he says, okay, let me, just, let me just show you this. Come here, turn and let me show you this from a different perspective. Let me, right. let me show you who you really are. I, I know that this is what you're thinking because you were thinking, looking down, this is who I am and I'm looking down. This is, you know, this is my perspective and I'm looking down at the muck and mire. And he's saying, lift your head. Let me show you another perspective. Nothing's changed except perspective. Right. 
Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's really well. I love the way you framed that. Gee, Jane. That is beautiful. Oh, I am just, um, it is so right now what's happening to me in this moment, um, I am being filled with hope. I am being filled with hope and I am being filled with uh, the knowledge that my circumstances are so well known by God. They are. That Yeshua is in the middle of all of it. And as I cling to his zitzit, <laughs> as I'm underneath his tallit, all of these things, all of these things, I'll be able to take one step at a time and get through all of these things. Amen. Yeah. It Amen. doesn't mean you- that my circumstances are going to change, you know. It just means that it just means that I'll change. Like you said, your perspective on, on the situation changes. You you were looking one way and now you can look at it differently and then he can even turn it 180 degrees, a different direction. hundred percent. That is, that is what's so amazing about what God does in his goodness. You know, he is able to cover us, to protect us to shield us, to guard us, to keep us and move us and turn us where he needs us to go next. And that is why, you know, I ended up going to school and getting a degree. I ended up going to Minnesota after, um, and take care of, you know, our, our families. I I mean, that's my number one thing. I've always been a caregiver. (laughs) I have nine kids, so it's kind of like who I am, but you have to take care of your family first. And, you know, then at the same time, he gave me the opportunity to go to college and to get a degree, but it's basically what I've been doing all along, but it's like, I didn't have a degree in it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, he expanded my understanding of the different streams of, of Christian thinking, um, because I got a minor, well, I should say a concentration in Christian ministries. Okay. I understand um, where the streams diverge, why they go different directions. Um, and God has called me to expand my tents while I was up in Minnesota. Isaiah 54 is something I just really, you know, because of what I've gone through, you know, it's just a powerful scripture. You know, it says more of the, <laughs> more is a, uh, are the children of the desolate woman than the married woman? You know, and I never thought that woman could be the same person. I thought they were two different people. Yeah. But for me being, having experienced this amount of desolation in my life, I, I, I look forward to how is God going to bring more young people into the walk in, than, than, than the nine children that I had, you know, I, that's why I said the Gen Z's, we got to reach them. We got to reach yes. the millennials. The millennials are going to be a huge they're already impacting and removing the emphasis of the baby boomers. We are like retiring and moving on. And the millennials are a huge army coming behind us. Yeah. And they need to be equipped and not be told you're too young. You know, I think a lot of what we've done in, in, in our patriarchal culture is you have to be an old white male <laughs> to be able yes. to lead a congregation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it, it's, it's kind of the same thing. You have to be old and you have to be male and you have to be a supremacist person in some degree mm-hmm. or another. Mm-hmm. Uh, but reality is um, we are all supposed to be submitted to the kingdom and do the gifts and callings that God has put on us. Yeah. It's not about who's a Jew, who's not a Jew, who's in, who's in leadership, who's not in leadership. I mean, Yeshua turned the world upside down. Yes, he did. He was a rebel years rouser. when he died. So he did this in, you know, the years younger than that. And mm-hmm. he, then you think his followers were also young. They were people, they weren't like 40 year old, 50 year old, 60 year old men. They were mm-hmm. young men mm-hmm. and they turned the world upside down. And we have a millennial generation who's about to turn the world upside down. Again. Yes, amen. And we have amen. got to give them the space mm-hmm. and the platform and the yes. opportunity Amen. to do all that God's called them to do. So when I think about equipping women, yeah. you know, in the millennial generation or Gen Z, I'm looking for younger women to bring them up to, it, 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 you know, other people will look for younger men. We've got to bring up the next generation in the faith and it shouldn't be any kind of supreme, you know, person over you and you don't qualify. You don't, you don't, um, 
you don't measure up, you're not good enough. You know, well, being single is really hard because you realize so much of the church culture that's infiltrated the messianic movement is, is, oh, you're not married. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we don't have a place for you anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like, I've been doing all this work alongside Yeshua all this time. And all of a sudden I don't have a man and I don't count. All of a sudden your value is being questioned. It is. Mm, and it, it's, yeah. it's, it's a tough one, but you know, we, yeah. we've got to stop that um, yeah. because God calls us all to do the work of the great commission. Oh, Jane, say that again, please, please speak <laughs> well, God that, calls speak us that over all again. to do yes. the work of the great yes. commission. So when they say women can't teach or preach, mm -hmm. you have now limited at least half the army of God from going forth to sharing the good news exactly. because, you know, probably it's more like 75% of the people mm -hmm. in most congregations are female. Yeah. I mean, if you say you can't preach or teach the great commission is go into all the world, make disciples. <laughs> Therefore, you That's have to it. proclaim the good news to make disciples yep. and you baptize them, immerse them, but you teach them to obey the commandments. So preaching evangelism and teaching is, is everyone's job yeah. in the kingdom. Yeah. It's it, not just the, the male heads that run the elder board of an organization. Mm -mm. It is everyone's job to make disciples, everyone's job mm -hmm. to baptize everyone's job to immerse into the kingdom of Yeshua, everyone. And, and so I just feel like if we don't let women know they have a role, they sit on the sidelines waiting for a man to do what they're called to do. And if we refuse to use our voices for what God has called us to do, then, then we are, we're basically telling God that he doesn't know his business. We're basically saying, well, I know that, uh, you know, you, you, maybe this is what you think I should do, but I can't do this. I mean, it's re it's really saying that God is not able to use us and to speak through us to right. anyone. It, it's really, um, I don't know. I guess what's hitting me in my spirit is that we just don't have any business being that selfish. We need to be exactly who God's called us to be. And we need to start operating exactly how God's called us to operate because people need to hear this. It's not about us. We need to let all of that go. Um, and that's why when I love your message so much because your, your message is really speaking to every woman, no matter who she is, no matter what age she is, no matter what her economic uh, background is, no matter what her educational background is, no matter if she's married or widowed or single or divorced or, or um, young and, and just not married yet. It doesn't, it, none of that matters. What matters is that you be grounded in Yeshua Messiah. You be grounded in Yeshua Messiah and be mm -hmm. who he has called you to be. And when you are, your voice will affect your, the atmosphere around you. We're always talking to the ladies about, especially on Shabbat, that we have the, we've been given the ability to affect the atmosphere of our home. Whatever our home looks like, whatever that dynamic looks like, we have been given the opportunity to affect the atmosphere of our home. And we can't blame other people for, for what we're, for, for our part of what needs to be done. You know, we can't say, well, my husband's not leading or, you know, um, you know, so-and-so is not taking care of that. We have to stand up and say, father, how do, how do I affect the atmosphere of my home? How do I bring shalom into my home? How do I honor your, how do I set this as a day of delight for you? And when we do that, he meets us right there. And all of the circumstances, they have to bow their knee. Let's let, how, what if we did that? <laughs> what if we just enjoyed that? What if we just said, how do I participate with you in this? And everything else has to, everything else has to come underneath, <laughs> underneath the Toledo of Yeshua. Yeah. Because if you're underneath the Toledo of Yeshua, everything that's coming at you has to come underneath that Toledo and he will deal with it. Right? 
Yes, he will. He will. I was reading some of your sidebar comments I you were speaking to and 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 you know I really do believe um Jess commented about a lot of Hebrew roots churches that women mostly cooked and you know served in the kitchen and um, took care of the kids and the only place we had a place to participate was the Davidic dance and that's reality <laughs> that's yeah, why yeah. I started a dance ministry because that was wow. the only place I could express myself as a minister of the gospel in the old culture of the homeschool patriarchal you know, umbrellas you know um i did have the liberty to um do the dance ministry and i felt like it was my five minutes to preach mm -hmm. you know and so it was my five minutes to share a testimony my five minutes to um reach out to the lost yeah. it was it was you know and, and that doesn't mean that dance ministry isn't valid. I mean, I'm so visual and yeah. I, and I cannot sit still during worship. I'm like, every bit of me has to be moving. So, um, you know, dance ministries are important, um, but it shouldn't be the only place women are assigned right. to be able to right. impact for the kingdom that, you know, the only place women can do is minister to children. The only place women can is minister to women. Mm -hmm. um, that's not how it it's meant to be. Um, I used to be, before I became into the Messianic movement, I was um, involved in more Pentecostal charismatic kind of churches that were very into evangelism. And so I used to go door to door, knocking on doors and, and share the good news. You know, <laughs> then I came into this Messianic homeschool mindset where I, you know, I wore calico dresses and head coverings all the time. And oh, a woman can't teach. A woman can't lead a man. A woman could lead a man into the air, you know, mm -hmm. and I ended up going through this. Oh, I can't go knocking on doors anymore. I can't share right. the good news because right. what happens if a man answers? Mm -hmm. Then I, right. I can't teach him anything because I can't preach. I'm not allowed to do that because there's certain scriptures that we misunderstand. Yes. And uh, David Wilbur's got a book that he's going to speak uh, coming out, but it's a book you should check into. It's called, is God, a <laughs> is God a misogynist? You know, basically he's going over all these difficult scriptures that you think God is, or Paul <laughs> is saying women can't do. It's not even that necessarily God's saying it, but you think God's saying it through Paul that women aren't allowed. And he's showing, you know, that's exactly. Paul did not mean for us to have this idea at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. We've picked up the wrong um, message in our, and some of it's the way it's translated into English right. or why the words are chosen mm -hmm. to be translated that way when it has mm -hmm. to do with a woman versus why that's chosen to be translated when it has to do with a man. And so, um, you know, it's a great book. It frees you up a lot to realize that, yes, every one of us is called to do the Great Commission. Every one of us is Everyone. called. And that doesn't mean you go, we don't need to be respecters of persons like, oh, you're man. Oh, I sorry. I can't talk to you. See you later. I'll go find a brother who come over and talk to you later. Yeah. I don't think we should, we have to be careful. We do have to be very careful about boundaries yes. though. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, that is, um, you know, it, it's one thing to do it in public. It's another thing to be doing it on the side in the private life. And that's not okay because that's, that invites disaster right um we right. Do have to be unhealthy attached we are male yeah. and female and yeah. that um we do have to protect our um testimonies mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh you know who we spend time with and how we spend that time and you know to keep our boundaries um so it, it is a yes you're called to preach and teach but also do it within uh holiness right and reverence right Right. Hey, Debbie was, um, Debbie Franick was asking, what was the name of the book that we did a study on the one showing Yeshua giving ministry to both men and women? Do oh, you remember the name of that book? Yes. Um, Jesus broke the rules to set us free. Jesus broke the rules to set, to set us free. Us free. I think it might be by Sharon Janes. It, it's a, it's a, it's a Christian book about how you know, um, the different interactions Yeshua had with women, mm. <laughs> you know, like the Samaritan woman, for instance, you yeah. know, she's not, you know, and I think that's what that book was called. Debbie, Debbie was in at a home fellowship with uh, doing that at one point. Is that, is that sound right, Debbie? Yeah. I'm looking it up. Yes. Myself. Yes. And was the other book, uh, is God a misogynist? Is that by date? Did you say Dave Wilkins, David Wilbur, 
Wilbur. I'm sorry. David Wilbur. It's like Paul Wilbur, but it's E-R, I think, instead of U-R. <laughs> okay. So let me let me type that in the notes, ladies, so that you, you will have that too. Yeah. This book, How Jesus Broke the Rules to Set You Free, is by Sharon Janes. And we did do a Bible study with a group of women around my dining room table on that topic because it's got some really great insight. There's other Christian women authors that have written some really uh, powerful um, Carolyn Custis James um, Sharon Janes is J A Y N E S just like my name is oh Jane I'm sorry S. okay Sharon Janes is the Jesus how Jesus broke the rules to set you free and Carolyn Custis James J A M E S she uh, has written some really great books she's written a book on the gospel of Ruth that's basically what she calls it. But she talks about um, Naomi and Ruth and their sojourning back, you know, they're on the road to Zion <laughs> when Ruth makes her conversion. <laughs> your people are my people, your God are my God. Wherever you wow. go, I will go. Mm -hmm. That is her conversion. She might have maybe sort of converted to the worship of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when she was married. But that's kind of like, yeah, you're in love. You're going to do whatever it takes to yeah. join the family. Right. But this time she's not in love. She's <laughs> lost her husband. They've lost mm -hmm. everything. They're on the road design. And Ruth makes that confession of faith. So now she's a now known as a mother to Israel. A non-Jew is so grafted in and so in the kingdom. She's now considered today a mother to Israel, but she was a Gentile. She was a non-Jew, a Moabitess. You know, their family history was not good. You know, um, when you think about it, you know, she's the great grandmother of King David. You know, I have a great grandmother. I don't know. My mom's one of the youngest, but I can remember my great grandmother. Think about that. How many of you can remember your great grandmother? Right. And yeah, right. I mean, just think about if that was Ruth, <laughs> what an impact that would make in your generations where that made Boaz when he, when he, you know, it's kind of like when you, when you think about the ancestral, uh, Rahab also came, you know, when you look back, exactly Boaz, Boaz, you know, the same thing, there's an ancestral connection to a non-Jew serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, protecting the Jewish people, protecting Israel, protecting the seed of Abraham, and, and coming into community covenant with them. And that's what you said about the Rus. We want to be the Rus. We want to be, we're calling all Rus to come back into that relationship of, of a male and female, Jew and non-Jew, all serving the kingdom of Yeshua. We're all on the road design. We're all going there together. And that is, um, you know, what we're, we're, where we're headed. And, you know, Ruth made that confession of faith as a single woman. Yes, she did. Yeah. And, and, and not just a single woman, but a single woman completely displaced outside of her land, outside of her people, outside of anything that she knows of with a mother-in-law who's complaining and cranky sort of you know? her and pushing her away <laughs> yeah. like, go back to yeah. your gentile ways girl go back that's and right like, i'm not going back you're not making me go back i'm going with you i'm going to zion i'm going to bethlehem i'm going with the god of abraham i see you jacob you can't make me go back you can't and there's make a me tenacity go there absolutely absolutely and, and the good news is hallelujah. that always the hesed that goes back and forth. And that's what Carolyn Custis James explains the hesed that's being exchanged back and forth. Ruth initiated it, but Boaz is a man of valor also. And Ruth is a woman of valor. They yes. initiated the hesed of God that brought forth the seed of Abraham, Yeshua. Okay. I've got goosebumps all over me when you said that. Okay. So we have some ladies that are asking a couple questions. Number one is, can you tell us the name of the book again and spell the author's name? So the name of the book about Ruth is, uh, it's called the gospel according to Ruth and it's got a subtitle. Um, don't remember what the subtitle is, but it, it's a Carolyn Custis James book. So just look up Carolyn Custis James. It's the gospel. Of, I, I can type it in here if you want. Okay. If yeah, if you want to type that in, that'd be awesome. And then, um, and then the other thing is Mickey asked identity when we're, we have five minutes and she said identity. And yes, because Ruth was a Moabitess. Yeah. She was not a, she was married to, she was married into the seed of Abraham, but she was not herself. Uh, 
bloodline in that and she was she was she went with Naomi into a completely foreign land right and Carolyn in her book Carolyn Custis James she says Naomi is like the female Abraham <laughs> or but then so is Ruth because yeah. they leave you know the land and, and you know no I said I should say uh, Naomi's like the female Job and Ruth is more like yes, the female yes. Abraham. That's a I better like that. explanation. I like that. Because they, Job, everything Job went through, just think of what Naomi went through. And she became so bitter mm -hmm. because of everything she went through. But she needed a paradigm shift. <laughs> she needed to see, she didn't even think her daughter, Ruth, her, you know, her daughter-in-law Ruth was, was a, she goes, I came back empty. Yeah, I'm like, you exactly. came back with Ruth. <laughs> what do you mean you're empty? Yeah. That's like, right. Nothing like devaluing a woman. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. like Ruth is like your treasure. You uh -huh. don't even recognize she's a treasure. Yeah. And she's with you and she's been with you and she's going to give you what you want in this earth. She's going to give you that baby and that blessing and, and yeah. keep your land for you because yeah. Ruth has joined you. She's helping you keep the land. Right. I was reading about joshua and caleb for the torah portion this week you know mm -hmm. and that is joshua's job is to help keep the land oh my gosh oh, oh. caleb is from oh, judah so good yeah caleb is from judah joshua's from ephraim and the job is to keep the land um in in ruth being from the nations you know a non-jew she also helped the jewish people naomi Mm -hmm. keep the land the yeah. inheritance yeah you know by the things that she did ministering that hesed that loving kindness yes oh jane i wish i could just keep you here for like five more hours <laughs> or we can do this again sometime we, I've had a let's great do time. this let's do this again um we have like a couple minutes left let's um Let's see. Is there anything else just, be, just before we go? We're going to go into the after party. We will stop the recording and we'll be able to talk openly and and ladies can ask you questions and things. But Jane, is there any is there any other message that you would just like to, you know, uh, reiterate or or um, anything else that you'd like to say? We've got just a couple of minutes. Well, I think that, you know, the Ha'il to Ha'il is the strength to strength message. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 84 that we will go from strength to strength and each one of us will appear before God in Zion. That is what we see with the woman of valor, Ruth. She is Chayil, and that's what the Hebrew word valor is, mm -hmm. Chayil. Mm -hmm. She finds a husband who is Chayil. They're both Chayil together. So you got a double, <laughs> a double whammy of this strength of God mm -hmm. on the road to Zion. Um, that's equipping us to go and be kingdom oriented and lifting each other up on this journey. And I think the most important thing I learned recently about Ruth was from Asher and Trader. He's a Messianic Jewish leader in Israel. Mm -hmm. And he apologized, not this year, but the year before they had a, you know, just because of COVID, you couldn't get on, you know, go to, go to fellowship. You couldn't go to Shavuot you know, services anywhere. They had a global Shavuot gathering and I watched it after the event with all these leaders from all over the world. And he said to the non-Jews, he goes to all you Ruths out there, I am sorry for our people. We have pushed you away and we shouldn't have done that. Instead, we should have embraced you. If we would have embraced you, we wouldn't have had all this strife these last since 1994 yeah, yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't have had all this problem he yeah. said we should have embraced you like boaz and you know even later naomi embraces but she actually rejected ruth acted like she was no good nothing mm -hmm. couldn't didn't have anything to give her nothing to help mm -hmm. her with you know she devalued her and yeah. i think there's a lot of that's happened over the past 30 years oh maybe 25 whatever you know mm -hmm. with the messianic jewish and the hebraic roots Mm -hmm. issues trials problems i feel like i have a better understanding of it now than i ever did yeah. but it's about we need to embrace one another we need to say we're not here to replace you right we're here to join you right we're here to be one with you 
Yeah. We're not trying to, you know, get you to submit to us and we're not going to submit to you without mutual submission. We're going to honor one another. And I think that is the, the thing God is doing right now is helping that reconciliation that needs to happen between the church and the synagogue, but it has to happen between the Hebraic roots and the Messianic Jewish organizations. We have to embrace one another and recognize, yeah, we have different calls. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the Messianic Jews, their calls is to get the Jews in the Orthodox congregations to come to theirs. That's what mm-hmm. my local congregation wants to do. They are across the street from the Orthodox temple, oh, you know, yeah. synagogue, yeah. and they want to get those people to come across the street. But, you know, yeah. for those of us been in the Hebraic roots movement, our call is to the church. Our yeah. call is different. Our call is to help the people in the churches understand they are called to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We serve yes. the God of Israel. Yeshua is the King of the Jews. You yes. know, it's like trying to get that into their thoughts so that they can actually understand Sabbath. Oh, it's part of the kingdom. Yes. You know, the feast. Oh, it's part yeah. of the kingdom. How yeah. we eat, how we celebrate, how we worship. It, it's honoring the King. And, you know, the Judaism gets that. They always, every prayer is Bless Absolutely. you, Lord God, King of the universe. 100%, you know, we need yeah. to get that as yeah. into the Christian mindset. Mm-hmm. follow the king. Amen. Amen. Jane, thank you so much. Okay. So I'm going to, when we get off here, we're, we're booking for the next couple of, we're going to be booking you, <laughs> booking you out here for the a few more t- t- Tuesday talks. <laughs> I love That'd you so fun. much. Thank you so, so much. Um, and I, and I wanted to just uh, tell you ladies that her Women of Valor, the conference is filled. It is, um, registration is closed for Women of Valor for Alul, which is next month. Um, however, she is looking for um, opening up another one, maybe West Coast, but be on the lookout for that. And we will keep you posted in the Rooted Cafe. We'll keep you posted on what's on what's going on, but um, be on the lookout ladies, because I, I just really believe that this is an amazing opportunity for us to be involved in uh, in this conference. And I it'll be my first one that I'm going to. I'm very, very excited. I can't, I can't wait. Yes, the website's so, a little difficult to find because sometimes you have to put dashes between women yeah. of and valor. Okay. So if you don't put the dash in there, you won't find it. Um, yeah. But we do have a Facebook page, which will link you to it. So if okay. you go to the Facebook page and you like it, it'll help you. I do post things there. I know because of all the election chaos, political mm-hmm. correctness, a lot of people have gotten off Facebook. So yes. Yes, it's, they have. It, this year I was like, we have to go back to old fashioned email to mm-hmm. contact people sometimes. Mm-hmm. But um there's, I, I feel like as long as we can share the good news on Facebook, we should share the yeah. good news on Facebook, it, wherever you are, wherever, wherever you, are. you are, that's where we need to be sharing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jane. Would you, would you do us the honor of just uh, praying for the ladies and then we will, um, we will dismiss, but it, would you just do that for us, please? Sure. Jane? Thank you. Father, just come before you. Thank you for the wonderful name, Yeshua, the name that covers us, the name that provides for us the name that protects us the name that shields us we are kept in yeshua we dwell under the shadow of the most high we hide and abide in the secret place of the almighty we worship you holy one of israel and i pray for all these women to get a great glimpse (laughs) and that's all we get right now is a great Mm -hmm. glimpse of what's coming of the kingdom lord and that they didn't be inspired to go ahead and share the good news and not hide but share the good news. What I mean is not hide from man. (laughs) They'd hide in you, but they go forth with the good news that they would share the love of Yeshua, that they'd be hospitable and welcoming people into their homes and encouraging righteousness within their households, whether they're married, single, uh, walking this walk by themselves. But you know, God, you can even use the faith of a, of a woman who's walking with you to turn the heart of her husband to you, Lord. You can turn the heart of the children to you by a woman who's an example of light shining in the darkness. So I just pray for all these women, Lord, that they would illuminate the darkness, that they find the place of honor when they illuminate the darkness for every festival, for Shabbat and all the feasts, women get the honor of lighting candles, illuminating darkness and saying, this day is set apart. This day is holy. This day is is, is dedicated to you, Yeshua. And I just pray that they'd all get a grasp of how awesome it is to get to have that special, sacred, reverent time to be in you and for you to be with them and that they would actually just be so encouraged 
to walk forward toward Zion boldly Mm. in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much for those of you that are listening by podcast. We appreciate you. And those of you that are watching the replay, blessings. We will talk with you again next week on Tuesday Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Shalom.